Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is going to show you how to make the J-Dom wetting agent. Now, I'm going to say a few words about it, and then I'm going to take you in the basement and show you exactly how to make this awesome and versatile uh, gift. And so, the J-Dom wetting agent is a surfactant meaning that it breaks the surface tension of the water, allowing whatever the herbicide or the pesticide, natural pesticide that you're using, it will stick to the plant a lot better than otherwise. Also with the fertilizers as well, we can use this. It's super versatile and it can be a pesticide in itself. Cabbage worms, aphids, any soft bodied creature, it can be, it's very effective for those just by itself. So uh, first thing that we have to do is get the potassium hydroxide of a high quality. So I put a link in the description to the kind that I use. 90% pure, food grade, you wanna get the best stuff that you can, it's very important. Next thing is the oil. We're gonna be using canola oil because it's economical and it's very, uh, it's got the best wetting power of all the oils. You can use other oils, but just stick with, stick with exactly what you see here because this is actually the trickiest of all the solutions to make. But if you follow this exactly, you will have success. So get the canola oil, Next thing is the most important to get right, and that is the zero ppm water. So distilled water is ideal. And you can also get it from a dehumidifier. Also rainwater can work, but uh, if it comes in contact with your shingles and stuff, it can have dissolved solids in it. So I just recommend just wait until you can get the, the true distilled water because even filtered water, like with the Berkey water filter or the ceramic water filters, that removes bacteria and viruses and things, but that does not remove the hardness of the water. It does not soften the water, meaning the TDS. It does not remove the dissolved solids. So we need to utilize the distilled water for success. Now, let us go into the basement and I will show you exactly how to make this stuff and then we will come back and I will tell you exactly how to use it. Okay, first step is to acquire the appropriate utensils. In this case, a food grade five gallon bucket. It doesn't have to be food grade, but I like it to be. And then a uh, tight fitting lid like this. And then we're gonna drill a half inch hole in the top of the lid so that the shaft of this paint stir that you can get at the paint store or at Walmart so that it can fit through it. And you'll see why later. Then the next step is we want to weigh out exactly 320 grams of potassium hydroxide and then we are going to take the 320 grams of potassium hydroxide and put that first into the bucket then we are going to take exactly 250 milliliters of the distilled water and we're going to add that slowly to the bucket of potassium hydroxide now immediately you will see a reaction happen and there will be a boiling and a very noxious kind of fumes so you want to do it in a well ventilated area do it with the lid on, shake it around until the potassium hydroxide is completely dissolved, such as this. Then we are ready to take the 1.8 liter, exactly 1.8 liter of the canola oil. And we are going to add that in slowly to the mixture. Next step is we are going to take the paint stirrer and we're going to stick that into the bucket. And then we are going to take the lid with the hole in it, the half inch hole, and we're going to place the shaft right through the uh, lid. And then we're gonna attach the drill. And this is really gonna help us a lot when it comes to splashing. And otherwise it's gonna be getting all over the place. And so here we are, at, when we begin, about a minute into it, it's still very watery and this is far from ready. So here we are now about four minutes into it and you can see it's starting to thicken up, although it's not nearly where we want it. It's getting thicker, but it's not sticking to the ladle. And so we really need it to uh, become thicker. So here we are about nine, nine and a half minutes of actual solid drilling and it is where we want it. So when yours, after about nine minutes of drilling on high speed, this is what it should look like. Uh, like a thin mayonnaise or mustard. Uh, when you pull it up, it kind of sticks to the ladle and uh, it's starting to get the bubbles and it's just really started to thicken up. So this is adequate. This is where we want it after nine minutes on high speed drilling. Now we're going to remove the ladle and we're gonna replace the lid. And then we're just gonna let it sit for 30 or 72 hours. And in that time, it's going to begin to set up. You see here we are about 36 hours later and it started to set up really nice, but the center is still uh, uh, far from set. So it's not ready. Here we are 72 hours later and the whole thing is pretty much as set up as it's going to be. 
and when we press it, it's like a real soft, like a lard or tallow or some kind of a, maybe a fruit cake or something like that. At this point, we're going to add exactly one gallon of the distilled water. And we're going to pour it in slowly, and then we're going to take the ladle and break it up into clumps. We're going to uh, get all of it out of the sides of the bucket. We want to make sure that it's all going to start to get broken up. And then we are going to uh, utilize a potato masher. And then we're going to take the potato masher and we are going to break it into finer chunks like this. We're just going to mash it all up and we really want to get it mixed in well with a real low agitation speed. And then we let it sit and then we'll come back like an hour later and then we'll do it again and you see more of it is dissolved like this. And so after one or two cycles of this, after an hour or two, then we're going to add exactly an additional gallon plus 13 ounces and then we're going to start stirring like this and what's important when we stir is that we use a low rpm you see how we're starting to get a little bit of foam but we don't want to get any more foam than this as little foam as possible if you are stirring it too fast you're going to get a whole bucket full of foam and that's not what you want so you want to use a low rpm do it for a, a minute or two and then let it sit for a couple hours or an hour, maybe two hours and then come back, do it for another minute or two until you see here after four cycles of this or so after four, five, six hours, it has all started to dissolve really good and the clumps are smaller and smaller. And when it gets to this point, then we're just going to drill it on a nice and slow RPM so that we're not creating a lot of froth. We don't want them suds in there. So uh, you just do it on the low setting and mix it in real good and this time we're going to do it you know two three minutes something like that so it's really getting broken up until uh, after about a day of this then it's going to look like this after about 12 hours of every hour or two coming in giving it a minute stir uh, then it's going to look like this and this is getting pretty close to being ready so we're going to go ahead and let it sit for uh, overnight and then when we come back in the next morning this is what it looks like so i'm going to go ahead and call this good there's a little bit more left that might settle down with time, but we can go ahead, we can put this in bottles right now, uh, or my favorite method is to just put a lid on it and place it somewhere in where it's somewhat cool, where it won't be disturbed. Uh, and it lasts pretty much indefinitely. There's no expiration date. Go ahead and take a screenshot of this so you have the exact recipe. Okay, my friends, so you have made J-Dom Wetting Agent. Now, I'll put a link in the description to the J-Dom book so that you can read the book for yourself. I highly suggest it. But this, remember, I did not invent this. I'm just showing you exactly how it's done. So if you've made it and it looks like this, that's because you use tap water or something with parts per million in it, 180 or something. So it's cloudy. It's got foam up top. This is not going to be nearly as effective as this stuff that we just made with the distilled water. And it's very important because the effectiveness is determined by this. So we want to use the distilled water so it will look something like this. Okay. Now, when are we going to use this? Anytime that we apply any of the natural pesticides or natural fungicides or natural fertilizers to the leaves of the plants. Meaning anytime that we foliar feed them uh, or spray any of the insecticides, we're going to utilize this stuff. We're going to start out at one ounce a gallon and then we're going to observe to make sure that everything is fine. And if we need more power, two ounces maybe and then observe again and three ounces a gallon uh, th that we could use. If we have a total infestation of like thripes or aphids or some soft bodied creature, we can even go to four ounces a gallon. Uh, along with one of the natural pesticides like the garlic or something like that things I've made videos about uh, but we don't want to go any higher than that so for the most part one ounce a gallon is going to be totally adequate you can also use this as soap it's a wonderful mountain type soap and uh, there you have it my friends so if you found the video useful uh, give it a thumbs up and this really took a lot of effort for some reason making this one so if you would like to uh, say thank you by way of a donation to the paypal account there is a link in the description and i would greatly appreciate it i will see you next time my friends